Good evening, and welcome to our annual Academy Awards Ceremony. The program this year, like the year itself, will be different than those we have enjoyed in the past. This is the 112th academic year at the Academy, and I think it's safe to say the spring 2020 semester has been one of the most unique in our history. We never would have imagined in the fall of 2019 that we would end the year closing our campus, switching entirely to distance learning, and canceling sports and all other public gatherings. Well, I assure you, our Father in Heaven knows all things. He has always been, and He always will be, in control. And despite the inconveniences, the frustrations, and the disruptions, how blessed we are that He has brought us safely to this point. I want to express my heartfelt thanks to all of our faculty who have been required to immediately switch to courses and move to a digital format in a period of three days. Well done, teachers. I also want to thank all of our families for their grace and patience as we are on the brink of completing a very difficult semester. Students, thank you for your resilience and tenacity as you complete this year with more strength than you knew possible. This has been a difficult time, but the Academy family has risen to the occasion, and for that, I am so grateful to each one of you. And now, we have the opportunity to recognize and celebrate some of our students who have put in the time, the work, and the effort to responsibly meet their goals in a variety of different areas. Congratulations in advance to those who will be honored tonight. Though there are many who will be mentioned from this platform tonight, there are so many others who have had silent victories and successes throughout the year. You may not be mentioned here tonight, but we are thankful for you and celebrate you as well. I will be followed by several members of our Academy community who will announce the award recipients. Students, we will be getting your certificates, plaques, and other tokens to you as we can. In just a short time, we pray that we will be back here in the RCC celebrating the class of 2020 as they commence to universities, colleges, careers, and most importantly, their faith. Thank you for tuning in this evening. And now to paraphrase Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God our Father. And truly tonight, we give thanks. Before we get underway, one of our campus ministers, Reverend Clint Followell, will come and lead us in prayer. Please pray with me. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done in our lives and here at SMA this semester. Father, even though it has been a semester like no other, we are grateful uh, for how you have moved in our lives and how you've used the teachers and the faculty uh, to instruct these students and to not just teach them, but to help model what it means to follow after you. And so God, we pray uh, for the students and for the families that you continue to bless them um, as this semester comes to an end and we get into uh, the summer. But God, we also thank you for tonight for this opportunity to honor students. And so God, we ask you bless this time as we get to have a little bit of fun, uh, but then also uh, celebrate our students and the rewards and the honors that they have earned. Uh, Be with us today. Uh, We ask that in all that we do, we lift you high. In Jesus' name, amen. The Department of the Army Superior Cadet Award is the highest junior ROTC award for merit that a cadet can receive. The award is presented to the most outstanding cadet representing each class. The selection is made based upon the following criteria. The cadet's grades in junior ROTC and his or her overall academic accomplishments. Demonstrated military leadership, academic and extracurricular leadership, and the cadets demonstrated qualities of discipline, courtesy, character, and potential. It is my privilege to award the Superior Cadet Award 
to the following cadets. The first year recipient is Cadet Corporal Mitchell Howard. The second year recipient is Cadet Staff Sergeant Hudson Lee. The third year recipient is Cadet Major Caleb Struby. And the fourth year recipient is Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Gordon Murphy. Congratulations, gentlemen. God bless you guys. Good evening. I am Madeline DeLong, and assisting me tonight is Mrs. Jill Johnson Russell, SMA class of 1997, and a member of the Alumni Council. San Marcos Academy graduates established the Distinguished Service Award many years ago. This award is a character award in which consideration is given to academics and extracurricular activities. The Alumni Council presents the award based on nominations received by SMA faculty. Jill and I are honored to announce these recipients. Our sixth grade recipients are Nathaniel Green, and Ella Gomez. From the seventh grade, awards go to Edric Pascal and Lauren Hurst. Eighth grade recipients are Leighton Chave and Sarah Britton. Representing the ninth grade are Mitchell Howard and Ileana Summerlatte. From the 10th grade, we have Hudson Lee and Peyton Helbig. And finally, from the 11th grade, the recipients are Evan Shabby and Victoria Polinas. Congratulations to all of these deserving students. Much like going off to college, our resident students pack up, leave home, and move into a dorm room. They must learn how to live with their roommate, eat in a dining hall, and prioritize their time and their money. By the time they actually move on to a college campus, they have already learned many of the difficult transitional lessons most college freshmen are just learning. Every year, the dorm staff select outstanding students to receive the Residential Life Awards. These awards carry a unique honor because they recognize the students who, day in and day out, conduct themselves in an exemplary manner. We will begin with the awards for the boys' residence halls. From the middle school, Andrew Nee. Representing the ninth grade, Destiny Njoku. From the 10th grade, Austin Lowe. Our 11th grade recipient is Manuel Kagoya. And the 12th grade recipient is Ayo Adekunli. Now for the recipients from the girls' residence halls. From the middle school, Ellie Howe. Representing the freshman class, Charlotte Blue. From the junior class, Arden Muchigamba. And our senior class, Cecilia Gonzalez. Congratulations to these wonderful men and women.
Well, if you think I'm uncomfortable, usually in a suit, how do you think I feel after seven weeks of shorts and Crocs? This is a kind of a drastic change for me. But here we go. Uh, one of the programs involving most of the students at San Marcos Academy is the athletic program. Tonight, we have the honor of presenting the highest overall awards for achievement in athletics. As a Christian organization, one of the most prestigious awards that we can bestow is one that reflects distinguished character as reflected in the life and history of Christ. Several amazing young people were nominated for this award, but our two winners clearly demonstrate a love of Christ in a way that they live their lives, trustworthiness, willingness to help, and concern for others are common traits among these recipients. I am very pleased to present the, this award to each of them. Our Mike Kitt Female Christian Athlete of the Year Award winner is Mackenzie Young. And our Mike Kipp Male Christian Athlete of the Year is the little old man, Caleb Gunther. The Manny Foster Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards are designed to recognize athletic accomplishments as, a, as reflected in the core values of the athletic program at SMA. Those values are character, effort, teamwork, and attitude. As usual, the Manny Foster Male Athlete of the Year Award decision was an incredibly difficult choice for our coaching staff. This year's recipient made his first big impression on our coaching staff last year when, as a transfer who came just a little bit too late to play football, he practiced with the team for the remainder of the season, even though he wasn't eligible. He's a very gifted athlete who was a key contributor to our football and baseball programs, but aside from his athletic skills, he was also a leader in the locker room, both vocally and by example. He was a huge part of our success in both sports. Our Manny Foster Male Athlete of the Year is Bryce Patterson. The Manny Foster Female Athlete of the Year wasn't an easy decision, but one name clearly came, was mentioned more often and that went from suggestions of our coaching staff. This year's winner was an MVP in two sports and a battling bear in another. She excelled in team sports. She's an intense competitor and is incredibly tough, but quite possibly her talents are most on display as a cheerleader where she has entertained everybody with her incredible multiple flips. For the second year in a row, our Manny Foster Female Athlete of the Year Award goes to Ava Webb. Our next award is the highest award offered by the Athletic Department. The Bob Jennings Athletic Director's Award goes to the person who best displays character, effort, teamwork, and good attitude. Basically, this award goes to the person who you would most want for a teammate because he or she for, uh, truly grasps the concept of team first. This is always a really tough award to choose and there are several young men and women who fit the criteria. This year's recipient isn't always the most vocal person in the locker room, but has probably earned the most respect. He leads by example and when he talks, his teammates listen. He patiently mentors our younger players. I've coached him for four years and have not ever heard him say he didn't want to do what he was asked. On top, of, on top of everything else, he might be the toughest kid I've ever coached. He really shouldn't make as many tackles as he does from the defensive end position, especially lined up against guys that are outweighing him by a lot and like to hold him a lot too. He makes so many tackles because he's relentless and once he grabs a hold of something, he isn't letting go. It's hard to imagine our defense without him on the field. The Bob Jennings Athletic Director Award goes to Gordon Murphy. Good evening, I'm Ruth Schwartz and I'll be announcing all the Fine Arts Awards tonight on behalf of Mr. Leifesty and Mr. Fleming. The Outstanding Visual Artist Award in recognition of creativity, personal expression, and dedication is given to Abby Funderburg. The Theater Department has two awards this evening. The first is our Rising Star Award. 
This is presented to a student who shows enthusiasm and promise in theater. This year's recipients are Ian Ferris and Truett Martin. The Director's Choice Award is presented to a theater student who shows excellence in and dedication to theater arts. This year's two recipients are Cortland Harrisnay and Mac Daniel Howard. Outstanding band members in each grade receive the Director's Choice Award for band. These recipients are Grayson Sedler in the sixth grade, Lauren Hurst in the seventh grade, Leighton Chave in the eighth grade, Lyndon Fisher for the ninth grade, Andrew Longoria in the 10th grade, Bonnie Dye in the 11th grade, and Micah Burton for the 12th grade. The Patrick Gilmore Award is one of two nationally recognized awards given to outstanding band members who have made significant contributions to the SMA band program over a period of time. The Gilmore Award is awarded to all state clarinist Daniel Abagaber. The John Philip Sousa Award is the highest award and can be given to only one SMA band student each year. It is a nationally recognized award presented each year throughout the USA. The John Philip Sousa Award for 2020 goes to all area flutist and SMA drum major, Eddie Cianciotto. Congratulations to each of these talented students. On behalf of the Social Studies Department, I am proud to present the Larry Roberts Memorial Award. This award is presented each year to a deserving student of history and loving memory of Mr. Larry Roberts, who taught history at the Academy for 25 years. Based on the performance in Dual Enrollment U.S. History and the Dual Enrollment Political Science courses at SMA, this year's recipient for the Larry Roberts Award in Social Studies is senior Cindra Rodriguez. Congratulations, Cindra. Before we recognize our seniors, I would like to announce the names of underclassmen who have been selected to represent SMA at three summer programs. Texas Boys State and Girls State are for students who have completed the 11th grade and will have leadership roles at school their senior year. Boys State takes place in June at UT in Austin and is sponsored by the American Legion. Blue Bonnet Girls State is sponsored by the American Legion Auxiliary and takes place in June at Texas Lutheran University in Seguin. HOBI, which stands for Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Conference, is a summer program for youth student leaders who have completed the 10th grade. HOBI takes place in June at the UT campus in Austin also. The young man selected to attend Boys State is Max Watson. The young lady selected to attend Girls State as an alternate is Victoria Pohemis. The three sophomores selected to attend Hobie are Katarina Vasquez, Belle Cummings, and Connor Irwin. We wish these students well in their leadership pursuits. Now for the scholarship awards, and here to present our local scholarships to graduating seniors is Amy Balcom, representing the Bear Network and both the San Marcos Rotary Club and the Greater San Marcos Rotary Club. Good evening. 
I am honored to present five deserving seniors with scholarships on behalf of our Bear Network, our parent organization for middle and upper school families. These seniors are Addie Ciancioto, Austin Lee, Gordon Murphy, Carter Pruitt, and Sindra Rodriguez. Congratulations to these five seniors on behalf of Bear Network. I'm also honored as a member of the San Marcos Rotary Club to be presenting that club's scholarships to two other deserving seniors. Those seniors are Gordon Murphy and Aaron Emmerich. And finally, I'm also glad to announce the Greater San Marcos Rodeo Club is awarding a scholarship to Kai Yang. Thank you, Ms. Bauckham. Students who have shown high academic achievement and or above average college entrance exam scores while in high school often receive merit scholarship offers. Merit scholarships are offered by both public and private universities to entice seniors to study with them. Because of this, a student who applies to several universities may receive several scholarship offers. Tonight, I will read the name of each senior and the names of the universities from which that student received a scholarship offer. Bennett Blair has received scholarship offers from LSU, University of Oregon, Temple University, and Hofstra University. He has decided to accept the offer from Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. Addie Cioncioto has been offered scholarships from Dallas Baptist University and the University of Mary Hardin Baylor, but has decided to accept the scholarship offer from Texas Lutheran University. Will Conway has been offered scholarships at Midwestern University, Oklahoma State University, Wichita State University, William Woods University, University of Mary Hardin Baylor, Hardin Simmons University, and Texas Wesleyan University. He has accepted the offer from Westminster College in Fulton, Missouri. Aaron Emmerich has accepted the scholarship offer from Texas State University. Camille Garcia will attend Texas Tech University with a renewable scholarship. Caleb Gunther has been offered a scholarship from Dallas Baptist University, but will attend his mother's and father's alma mater, University of Mary Hardin Baylor, on a music scholarship. Austin Lee was offered scholarship to Case Western Reserve University and Trinity University, where he will attend this fall. Austin will also run track for the Tigers. Davin Meredith will attend Texas State University on a renewable scholarship. Gordon Murphy and Bryce Patterson will attend Texas Lutheran University on academic scholarships and will also play football for the Bulldogs. Carter Pruitt will attend University of Texas in Austin with the Texas Valedictorian Scholarship. Crystal Q has accepted a scholarship with the Laboratory Institute of Merchandising in Manhattan, New York. Sandra Rodriguez was offered scholarships to University of Mary Hardin Baylor, Texas Christian University, and St. Edwards University, but has accepted the offers from Baylor University. Amberly Schlanger was offered a scholarship to Texas Lutheran University, but has decided to attend Texas State. Caleb Struby was offered scholarships to Baylor and Texas State, but will attend Texas A&M complete with scholarships from A&M and the United States Air Force. Julius Wong has been offered scholarships from St. Edwards University, but has decided to attend Texas State University. Lily Zhu was offered scholarships to Baylor, Marquette University, and the State University of New York, Binghamton, where she will attend in the fall. Kai Yang was offered scholarships from the State University of New York, Binghamton, the University of Connecticut, and Baylor, but has decided to attend the University of California, Davis. Carter Pruitt has been declared the highest ranking graduate of the senior class of 2020 at San Marcos Baptist Academy and is entitled to any awards pursuant to this honor. He will use this certificate when he enrolls in classes at the University of Texas in the fall. 
It entitles him to full tuition for his first year at the university. Sometimes a senior forgets their turn in scholarship offers to me and sometimes the offers arrive after our seniors have graduated. So parents and seniors, please continue to get scholarship information to me, even if it comes later in the summer so that I can update our records and celebrate with all of you. As of May 1st, when projected over a four year period, the total value of all the above mentioned scholarships for the class of 2020 is slightly more than $2.3 million. Please join me in congratulating these young men and women. Thank you. Hello. No award ceremony would be complete without giving due honor to those who have excelled academically. The honor roll is based on academic grades of 80 or higher each grading period in all subjects as well as satisfactory citizenship. Because we have a number of students who have achieved honor roll, we will recognize them on the following slides. Guilt Edge Honor Roll is based on semester academic grades of 90 or higher in all subjects along with satisfactory citizenship and maintaining a GPA of 4.0 or higher. The following will include the names of those on the Guilt Edge Honor Roll. Another award that we present at the end of each semester is the Second Mile Award. Those selected for this honor have, in the opinion of at least four of their teachers, exhibited exceptional effort in the classroom, whether that be an actual classroom or a virtual one. Their hard work attests to their positive attitude toward academics and serves as an inspiration to their peers. They've made their classroom a better place by being there. Those students selected to receive the Second Mile Award for the Spring 2020 semester are listed on the following slide. The final category of awards are presented to students who have been selected by their peers. These, in war, these awards include Mr. and Miss Middle School, our class favorites, and the Senior Hall of Fame. These awards have already been announced, but we wanted to recognize these students again on the following slides.
top honors for the overall contribution toward the betterment of the Academy are called Mr. and Ms. SMA. To determine the final recipients of the award, an administrative committee convened to select them from the nominees that were chosen by popular vote from the senior class at large. The nominees for Mr. and Ms. SMA were Camille Garcia, Sandra Rodriguez, Milan Rodriguez Bravo, Ava Webb, Micah Burton, Davin Meredith, Gordon Murphy, and Bryce Patterson. It's my honor to announce Mr. and Miss SMA for 2020. Miss SMA is Sandra Rodriguez. And Mr. SMA is Micah Burton. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching our Academy Awards program. I'd like to say a final congratulations to all the students we've recognized this evening. And I'd also like to add, it's difficult filming this in front of an empty auditorium. It's, uh, it's difficult to put in words how much we miss the presence of students this final semester of their senior year um, and the underclassmen that will return, we hope, um, cannot put that in words. And so through this month of June and July, which is the toughest months of the school year for an administrator because the building is empty, it's been extended somewhat, I look much forward to August probably more so than ever in my educational career. And now our campus minister, Reverend Monica Falwell, will come and lead us in a closing prayer. Thank you, Mr. Wiegand. Well, tonight has been an incredible evening of recognizing some incredible students. And so thank you for joining us. And uh, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you for every single one of our students who come in through these doors. We thank you for their creativity and their passion and, and their gifts. And so, God, tonight we have been able to recognize that. And so we, we honor you and glorify you with everything that you have done in and through them. But it doesn't stop tonight. And so, God, as our students walk out as they go into their summer, maybe into college, and wherever you lead them. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be there to guide them, that you would be there with them. And, you know, the instruction and the teaching doesn't stop tonight. And so we just pray that you continue to do your work in and through them. And so God, we thank you so much. We want to recognize just the, the teachers and the faculty and the staff that have graced this campus with their passion and with their gifts. God, we, tonight would not have been possible without them. And so, God, thank you so much for leading each and every one of these students or these teachers here. And so, God, um, we just pray for your blessing. And just as we go forth, we pray that you would be honored and you would be glorified. We do pray for a hedge of protection around our entire San Marcos Academy family. Keep them safe. Preserve them. Equip them. Empower them. So, God... We just, we love you, and we praise you, and we thank you for nights like this this night. We give you the glory. It's in your name I pray. Amen. <laughs>